closing arguments was just them begging to not get sanctioned. So they argued a ton of different things throughout this case. But the biggest thing was the judges kept interrupting them. They kept saying, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can you find me one other time in history where the person who took the loan was able to call the bank that they took the loan from, and then that bank showed up and said, we weren't defrauded. And the lawyers spent like two hours trying to find one little instance where it happened. But then the judges said, okay, let's try something else. They said, hey, have you ever prosecuted someone for lying about the value of a property when it resulted in the entire loan being paid back with interest? And again, they gave them like two hours to try to explain their case and they still couldn't produce a single case where that had happened. And then the judges said, hey, you know what? We'll give you another shot. They said, have you ever seen an attorney general prosecute a case where there was no damage to the public? There was no damage to the person you said was defrauded. And there was no actual malice committed by the person who took the loan. And then they took another like six hours on that one. And by the end of it, the judges were like, so you don't have any instance of that happening. And then by the time they were done, the judges were like, I don't even know if this is a case that should have been brought. And they said, look, y'all might need to be sanctioned for bringing this case in a malicious manner. One of the judges actually said, I have come to believe that since a case like this has never been brought in the history of the country, not only New York, that in New York, that you have only brought this case because the person was running for president, which would put you afoul of not only multiple regulations regarding the law, but would also run you afoul of electioneering interference. In fact, at the end of it, when they got to give their closing arguments, instead of arguing the value of their case, instead of arguing that like we should have been able to bring this case because of X and Y and all this shit, they actually just said at the end, we hope that the court will take into account that lawyers need to be able to bring cases like this without the threat of sanction. Basically, they were saying, we hope that you decide that we're not going to get in trouble for bringing this bullshit case. That was what happened at the appellate court. So Trump being found guilty of fraud and having to pay 500 some odd million fucking dollars and the whole left celebrating about that, he's going to get all that money back because the appellate court was like, this is a bullshit case. The people he took the loan from literally came to court on his behalf and said, hey, we weren't defrauded. We knew he overvalued Mar-a-Lago. We took that into our calculations. And even if we had taken that into our calculations and the value of Mar-a-Lago was part of 0.14. Like the president of Deutsche Bank said, you know why we gave him the loan? It had nothing to do with the value of Mar-a-Lago. It had to do with we given him 21 other loans and he has paid back all 21 with interest, we were giving him the loan regardless of the value of anything. And that's where the appellate court was like, how do you have a case? Deutsche Bank literally said we were giving him the loan regardless. And that's when they start begging to not get sanctioned. So yeah, that's what happened with the Trump fraud case this week. Going really well for